Hello, I'm Antonio Fagiusso from the Gastroenterology Unit of the University of Foggia, Italy. On behalf of myself and my co-author, Dr. Sidder Singh and Prof. Ilunga from San Diego University and Prof. Paul Kitter from Case Western Reserve University, Cleveland, Ohio, I will briefly describe the main findings of our study entitled Magnitude and Kinetics of Decrease in Liver Stiffness After Antiviral Therapy in Patients with Chronic Hepatitis C, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis. Liver stiffness assessment by means of vibration control transenterostography, so-called fibroscan, has superseded uh, liver biopsy as favored non-invasive modality, as suggested by uh, the current American Gastroenterological Association guidelines. Viral eradication assessed as sustained virological response is associated with significant decrease in liver stiffness over time, but uh, caused by both decrease in hepatic uh, inflammation and real fibrosis regression, but there is limited assessment of the magnitude of this decrease over time. Therefore, we de decided to conduct a systematic review and meta-analysis of 24 observational studies, including nearly 3,000 patients, with um, assessment on liver stiffness by means of fiber scan after therapy. Um, our primary outcome was to estimate the magnitude of decrease in liver stiffness at several time points after therapy, both in patients with sustained biological response and in those subjects who did not eradicate the virus. We estimated also what proportion of patients with baseline liver cirrhosis and liver stiffness beyond 9.5 kPa experienced a significant regression in liver stiffness below this cutoff point at one year after viral eradication. As you can see on this slide, Pooled analysis of change in liver stiffness after sustained virological response showed a significant decrease in this uh, parameter by 2.37 kPa at the end of therapy, 3.1 kPa within six months after the end of therapy, 3.21 kPa at one year after viral eradication, our primary outcome, and more than 4 kPa beyond one year after viral eradication. Time trend was statistically significant and this change was incremental over time. On the contrary, red dot line corresponding to non-responder patient showed that liver stiffness remained fairly unchanged in this subset of patients with even a slight increase at the end of the follow-up period. In 261 patients with baseline liver cirrhosis or liver stiffness beyond 9.5 kPa, uh, thus classified as having advanced fibrosis or cirrhosis at baseline and with sustained virological response, 47.1% experienced a significant regression in liver stiffness below the aforementioned cutoff point of 9.5 kPa at one year after viral eradication. On subgroup analysis, greater magnitude of change in liver stiffness was observed in studies conducted with novel direct acting antivirals and with primary patients with baseline cirrhosis. On metaregression analysis, uh, liver stiffness decrease over time resulted statistically dependent on baseline alanine and aminotransferase and proportion of patients with baseline cirrhosis, whereas no statistical association between baseline body mass index and liver stiffness change uh, over time was observed uh, on meta-regression analysis. Our primary results remained unchanged on sensitivity analysis restricted to only high-quality studies and no evidence of publication bias was found. Therefore, through our systematic review meta-analysis, we made several key observations. One, first, uh, liver stiffness decreases over time in patients with sustained virologic response, whereas no uh, difference are observed in non-responders. Second, uh, liver stiffness greater magnitude of change is observed in liver stiffness is observed in patients treated with direct antiviral agents and in patients with higher baseline health level and higher baseline liver stiffness. This may be a reflection of uh, higher hepatic uh, inflammatory burden which responds more rapidly to effective antiviral therapy, thus resulting in greater magnitude of early decrease in liver stiffness after antiviral therapy. Uh, although the real clinical benefits of these findings are still unclear.
In conclusion, we think that our findings may be of great interest to the pathological community because they may help to identify those subjects more likely to be a lower risk of liver-related uh, decompensation and complication. Further studies with assessment of long-term outcomes are warranted in order to properly address this point.